I am IRM. I am IRM. I worship God, the great I am, Redeemer and Master, who values my faithfulness as He expects humility and integrity in all my words and deeds. I belong to a church that exists to love God above all and share His love to others. I belong to a church that nurtures relationship with God and with people. I belong to a church that impacts our community, our country, and the world. I belong to a church that embodies servant leadership. A church rooted, rooted in, in the, the Word, word of God. God. A, a church, church united, united in, in prayer. prayer. A church commissioned to become intentional in redeeming lives and making disciples. This, this is who I am. I am. I am. I am. I am. Hello everyone. Good morning. Okay. Akalain niyo yun, aabot tayo sa ganito, no? <laughs> Ay, nako. Salamat sa Lord sa lahat ng bagay. Okay. Kumusta po mga kapatid? How are you everyone? Alexa, turn on the lights. Ang dami-dami natin. Yo, ano? Yun yun eh. Tights pa more. Para ano, para masaya. Okay. Hi. Alam nyo ba? I would like to inform you na four Sundays to go and 2020 is done. Alam nyo yun? Pag pastor ka, binibilang nyo, Sunday yung simba, hindi yung araw. Four Sundays na lang. Apat na simba na lang. Tapos na ang 2020. Handa na ba kayo? Ha? Hello? Handa na ba kayo? Hindi halata. Hindi halata. So let me ask you this question. How's your 2020 so far? Oh, ooh. thanks for asking. <laughs> thanks for asking, ha? Okay. Pero alam ko, hindi naging madali ang 2020 para sa, lahat, para sa ating lahat. Right? Tama ho ba? Okay. Sa akin din. Kalain nyo, napakabata ko pa para sa ganitong problema. Okay. Asa na yung ating PowerPoint? Ay, ako palang may hari. Yung first. Okay. So, bago lang ho nag-aaral yung ating, ano, yung ating operator. Sabay tingin kayo, no? napaka talaga ninyo. Ba, huwag nyo nang tingnan. <laughs> okay. Mag, mag, let's have a recap nung nangyari, sa lahat na nangyari ng 2020. So, hindi naman to lahat. Okay. January, right? Taal volcano eruption. Tama? Painful, right? Hong Kong protest. Oh. Napaka-discomforting, right? Oh. COVID-19, alam nyo ba, nagsasapit na siya ng anniversary niya last November 17. Nakaka-one year na po siya. Hindi, hindi ko nga alam eh. Yun, hindi, yun din ang gusto kong maalaman. Okay, COVID-19 pandemic. Oh, because of that, may mga tao na wala ng jobs, right? Mm. Australia's wildfire. Sama na natin yung sa Africa. Di ba? Nasusunog na ang earth. At saka yung lately, yung mga typhoon sa Philippines, right? Sunod-sunod. So, lahat ng mga bagay na to, lahat ng mga, lahat ng mga situation, condition na ito, napaka-painful. And it always brings us tears, right? Every time na maaalala natin lahat ng mga pinag pinagdaanan natin itong mga nagdaang taon, Nakakaiyak. And you may ask, kailan ba ito magtatapos? When will this end? Kailan ba ito magtatapos? May pag-asa pa ba tayo? So, we will be talking about tears no more. Umiyak ba kayo ngayong 2020? Taas ang kamay ng umiyak ngayong 2020. Raise your hand. Don't be shy. 
It's okay. Wow. Pero, nani, can you still, ano, realize na darating yung time na we will be having no more tears. No, no more tears. Umaasa pa ba kayo dun? Ha? Huh? Umaasa kayo dun? Okay. That's good. That's Revelation chapter 21 verses 3 to 7. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and He will dwell with them. They will be His people, and God Himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. Verse 5, He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. And he said to me, it is done. It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty, I will give water without cost. From the spring of the water of life, to those who are victorious will inherit all of this. And I will be their God, and they will be my children. We may ask, why we have pain? Natanong nyo na ba sa sarili nyo, bakit ba mayroong pain? Bakit ba may mga problema? Why we have pain? Romans chapter, okay. Pain, pain is inexcusable. Always remember that. Pain is inexcusable. Romans chapter 8 verses 18 to 20. Paul said, for I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to reveal to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the sons of God. Verse 20. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. So, why, we do, why do we have calamities? Why do we have sufferings? Why do we have pains? Why do we have, why do we have tears? Romans chapter 8 verse 20 says, For the creation was subjected to futility. This will lead us back to the creation of the world. Okay, let's go back to the book of Genesis. In the first chapter of the Bible, God created everything, right? Remember that? Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, right? Remember that? Okay. On the first day, He created light. Then God said, it was good. On the second day, He created the sea and the sky. Then God said, it was good. On the third day, He created the dry land and vegetation. Then God said, it was good. On the fourth day, God, He created the sun, the moon, and the stars. And then God said, it was good. On the fifth day, He created the fish and the birds. Then God said, it was good. Then on the sixth day, He created man. Then God saw everything He made. And behold, God said, it was very good. It was very good. That's the first Two chap but that's the first chapter of the book of Genesis. But in the third chapter of Genesis, the first man and the first woman, hulaan nyo ko sino? <laughs> si Eva si Adan. The first man and the first woman sinned against God, against the Lord, through the temptations of the serpent, right? Kilala nyo yun? Si Taning, kilala nyo si Satan? So, Nagkasala yung ating unang mga magulang sa Lord dahil sa tukso ng ahas. After that, as a consequence of what they did, God cursed, remember this, God cursed the serpent, the woman, and the man. Genesis chapter 3 verse 16 to 19. To the woman he said, Asa na? To the woman, he said, I will surely multiply your pain in childbearing. In pain, you shall bring forth children. 
You de your desire shall be contrary to your husband, but he shall rule over you. Verse 17, and to, and to Adam he said, Because you have listened to the voice of your wife and have eaten of the tree of which I commanded you, you shall not eat of it. Cursed, cursed is the ground because of you. In pain you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles, it shall bring forth for you. Thorns and thistles, it shall bring forth for you. And you shall eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face, you shall eat bread. Till you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken. For you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember Romans chapter 8 verse 20. For the creation was subjected, was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him, but because of him who subjected it. The phrase was subjected to futility or frailty means God cursed the creation to such kind of condition because of our first parent sin. Because of our first parent Dahil sa kanilang kasalanan, sinumpa ng Lord yung earth na ginawa niyang it was very good. Not willingly indicates that humans and the world did not choose the terms of God's verdict or judgment. God dictated those terms since He is God. Not willingly, remember, hindi tayo may gusto nito. Pero dahil sa kasalanan natin, pinermit ng Lord na mangyari itong mga bagay na to. Note the words that Paul used to describe the plight of creation. What, is the pl what are the plight of creation? First, Romans chapter 8 verse 18, the creation is suffering. Romans chapter 8 verse 20, the creation is in vanity. Romans chapter 8 verse 21, the creation is in bondage. Romans chapter 8 verse 21 again, the creation is in decay. And Romans chapter 8, verse 22, the creation is in pain. This is the consequence of sin. Because of man's sin, the earth was corrupted. Sickness, pain, tears, suffering, and even death entered the perfect world that God has created. So let's continue. Romans chapter 8, verses 21 to... 23, that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to corruption and obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation has been groaning, has been groaning together in pains of childbirth until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, not only the creation, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit grown inwardly as we wait eagerly for adoptions as sons, the redemption of our bodies. Notice these things. First, for we know that the whole creation has been groaning together in pains of childbirth until now. Verse 22. This means that not just some part of the creation... But the totality of the creation, none is exempted, walang exempted, is groaning together because of the pain and suffering experience. Groan means, ah, hindi ko pala nilagay. Groans means to utter a deep moan indicative of pain, grief, or annoyance. So that's groaning. Second, the phrase until now means up to this very moment, from the beginning, from the book of Genesis, until now, from the beginning, where our first parents sin up to this very moment, the whole creation is experiencing the pain. That's why we are groaning. Ibig sabihin, simula pa nung una, umuungol na ang buong creation dahil sa kanyang nararanasang pain. Kaya, Part ito ng buhay natin. Verse 23, And not only the creation, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit grown inwardly. It simply says that we, Christians, we, Christians, 
Even though God already forgiven us, even though we have already have faith in Christ, even though we already have a relationship with God, even though we already have the Spirit of God within us, we are not exempted to the pains and sufferings that this world has. Hindi ibig sabihin, Kristiyano ka, exempted ka na. Kasali pa rin tayo. But we may ask, What is the difference between a Christian from those who are not a Christian? Romans chapter 8 verse 28 will answer that question. Alam niyo tong lahat. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. For those who are called according to His purpose. Let me clear myself here. I am talking to those people who love God and who are called according to His purpose. I am talking to Christians. Christians ba kayo? Christians ba kayo? Amen? So, hindi ibig sabihin, exempted kayo sa sufferings. But, all things work together for good sa lahat ng mga Kristiyano. If you love God, If you are called according to His purpose, if you are a Christian, you may suffer and you will suffer. And you may experience pain. But Romans chapter 8, verse 28 reminds us that all things work together for our good. He never said everything is good. Huh? He never said everything is good. Rather, He said everything works together for our good. Everything, including the hurtful things, is for our good. Everything, kahit yung mga painful things, it is for our good. So you may ask again, how good is that? I think 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 6 to 7 will answer that question. How good is it? In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, If necessary, you've been, you have been grieved by various trials so that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. How good is that? The world may say that suffering and rejoicing is not compatible, which is totoo naman eh. Kasabihin ng world, rejoicing and suffering is not compatible. Hindi sila meant for each other, right? Right? Pero sa Christian, iba. But Peter is telling us that sufferings can bring us to rejoicing. Hmm. Why? Because God's purpose for all of this is what? Is to test our faith and to purify our faith. The purpose of all the pain is this, to test our faith and to purify our faith by trials. Always remember that. Pain is inevitable. It always brings us tears. But we can be firm and be strong knowing that God works all things together for our Good. So you may ask again, is there any hope for us? Yun yung kanong ko sa inyo kanina. Umaasa pa ba kayo na darating yung araw, wala ng pain, wala ng tears? Na umaasa pa rin ba kayo? You may ask, is there any hope for us? And the Bible will answer, yes. Yes. We have a hope. A hope that is dependable. First, let us differentiate The world's hope from the Bible's hope. Okay. World's hope. The modern idea of hope is to wish for, to expect, but without the certainty of the fulfillment. To desire very much, but with no real assurance of getting your desire. World's hope, no Real assurance. How about biblical hope? Biblical hope is, hope in scripture means a strong 
and confident expectation. Hope is an indication of certainty. There's a big difference between the two. Huh? Okay, so is it clear? When we talk about hope, it is not a hope. It is not a how I wish thing. Oh, how I wish na sana mangyari to. How I wish, how I wish. No. Yun yung hope ng world. But ang hope ng Kristiyano, the Christian hope is this, everything will become reality. Rather, we are talking about a future reality of things yet to come. Remember this, biblical hope is this, it is sure, it is certain. Hindi tayo na, how I wish na sana may heaven, how I wish na sana mawawala na itong mga bagay na to. Hindi yun yung biblical hope. Ang biblical hope is this, mawawala talaga ang tears. Biblical hope is this, mawawala talaga totally ang pain sa ating buhay. Romans chapter 8 verse 24, For who hopes for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. So, are you hoping? Umaasa ba ba kayo na mangyayari? Umaasa ba kayo sa pangako ng Lord? Kung umaasa kayo, doon sa pag-asa na yun, wait for it patiently. Wait for it patiently. It will surely come. Hindi sa life na to. But doon sa darating na life. So, what are we hoping for? We are waiting for what kind of hope? In his letter to the Ephesians, Paul declared that there is but one hope for the righteous. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 4. But that hope, 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 3, is reserved in heaven. Remember, always remember that. Our hope is reserved in heaven. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 3. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 4 and Colossians chapter 1 verse 5 is it's for the faithful only. Yung hope natin naka-reserve sa heaven. Pero ito ay para sa mga faithful lamang. It is therefore clear that our one hope, that our one and only hope is in heaven. Wait for it patiently. Wag na wag kayong maiinip. So why kept in heaven? Bakit hindi natin ngayon na agad? Why kept in heaven? 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 1. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ to those who reside as aliens, is scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, who are chosen. Note nyo yung, ano, yung naka-orange. Reside as aliens. Peter described the Christians scattered in Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia as aliens. Hindi sila mukhang alien, pero aliens sila. Why? Resident aliens mean, means that they reside here. They reside in Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, but they are just foreigners. They are just aliens here on earth. Ano ba ang alien? Ang alien ay yung foreign, yung hindi taga dito, right? Kaya pag yung mga taga Mars pumunta sa Earth, alien sila. Pero pag tayo ang taga Earth ang pumunta sa Mars, sinong alien? Tayo, di ba? Hindi naman sa mukha yun eh. Kalagayan yun. And we are just like them. Always remember that. We are just like them. We are also a resident alien here on Earth. Philippians chapter 3 verse 20 for our citizenship is in where our citizenship is in heaven from which also we eagerly wait for a savior the lord jesus christ maybe you're already a canadian citizen sino canadian citizen na dito raise your hand don't be shy be proud kayo nang may usb kayo nang may visa di ba di ba kayo nang pwedeng mamasyal sa us okay kayo na Oh, maybe you're already a Canadian citizen. Oh, or maybe you're still a Filipino citizen. Filipino citizen. Philippine passport. Ah, tulad-tulad tayo. Hindi tayo mamamroblema pag uwi. Hindi tayo mamamroblema yung mga may US, yung mga ano, Canadian citizen. Oh, di ba? <laughs> Ngayon, nagpapaduwal citizen sila. <laughs> okay. 
May, sino dito dual citizen? Yung ano, dual citizen? Ha? Wala pa? Ah, nag apply na nga pala sila. Okay. Gusto na nilang umuwi. But I want to tell you this reality. No matter what citizenship you have here on earth, if you are a Christian, remember this, if you are a Christian, you are a citizen of a heavenly kingdom. Or simply say, you don't belong here. We don't belong here on earth. Tanggapin nyo na na hindi tayo para dito. Hindi tayo para dito. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 11, where the heroes of faith were enumerated. You can find there Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and everyone else. Ito yung, ano, ito yung kwento ng yung Hall of Fame ng Bible. Verse 10, For he was looking forward to the city that has foundations, whose designer and builder is God, verse 13, having acknowledged that they were strangers, having acknowledged that they were strangers and exiles on the earth. Verse 16, they desire a better country that is a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared for them a city. What does that mean? The people enumerated in Hebrews chapter 11 suffered many trials and almost sacrificed everything just to obey God. They can do that because they know and they realize that they are just foreigners here on earth. And this world is not their home. This world is not our home. Their eternal home is waiting for them in heaven. Kahapon, pinag-uusapan namin sa Bible study ng Wow and Proverbs. Ang Filipino daw, hanggang six, ang average life expectancy ng Filipino ay 67 years old. So sino sa inyo malapit na doon sa 67? <laughs> Bakit? Hindi ba kayo excited dyan sa heavenly city? Diba? You will just spend 67 years here on earth, but you will spend eternity in heaven. Naunawaan nyo? Naunawaan nyo yun? So, yung mga tao sa Hebrews chapter 11, kaya, nil, kaya nilang tanggapin lahat ng sufferings and pains and tears. Why? Because they know na darating din naman ang araw lilipat na sila sa totoo nilang country. Uuwi at uuwi din sila sa kanilang totoong tahanan. Yun yung nawala sa atin sa, mga, sa modern day Christianity. Yun yung na-lost nating teaching sa lost sa Christianity. Nakakala natin, all we have to do is to enjoy this life. Your best life now. No? Parang ganun, yung mga ganun. Pero hindi natin alam, our best life is waiting there in heaven. This is, the, this is not the best life. Our best life is the eternal life. Always remember that. Hindi ito. Hindi ito. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse, 3, verse 6. Though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17 to 18. For this light momentary affliction is preparing us for this light, <laughs> light momentary <laughs> affliction is preparing us for what? For an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. Beyond all comparison. As we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. Sabi dyan, yung do ating mga trials, ano lang yan? For a little while. <laughs> For a little while. May siguro nakakaisang taon ka na naghihirap. Pero ang sabi ng, <laughs> natawa kayo. Pero sa, Anong sabi ng 2 Corinthians? This light momentarily affliction 
momentarily affliction. It won't last long. Hindi siya magtatagal forever. Why for a little while? Bakit ginamit ni Peter yung term na for a little while? Because Peter is comparing their life here on earth to the eternal life that awaits them. Kinocompare, huwag nyo kasing i-compare yung paghihirap nyo ngayon doon sa past comforts ninyo. I-compare nyo ngayon, i-compare nyo yung sufferings nyo ngayon doon sa future comfort na darating. Amen. Problema kasi natin, ay maginhawa ko noon, maganda buhay ko noon, ganito kami doon. Kaya, kaya, kaya tayo naghihirap lalo eh. Compare nyo, ngayon, compare nyo yung sufferings nyo ngayon doon sa future glory. <laughs> Sasabi ko sa inyo, kaya nyo ding sabihin, for a little while, matatapos din yan. Sabi ko nga sa inyo, 67 lang tayo dito sa, sa mundo. 24 na ako. Nagbibilang na ako ng mga ilang taon na lang. Pupunta na ako sa totoo kong tahanan. Excited na ako. And just like what Paul said to the Corinthian Christians, our affliction is just momentary. From this moment. Moment lang yan. Every time you suffer the pain caused by a corrupt world, remember three things. Kapag naghihirap kayo sa inyong mga pinagdadaanan, tandaan nyo to. We have a hope on God's promises. Because our hope is grounded in the sure promises of God, we can still be unshaken despite the suffering. Second, kapag naghihirap na kayo, remember this, we don't belong here. We don't belong here. Every, pra- every pain, rejection, illness, persecution, frustrations must cause us to realize that we don't belong here. Dapat, yung mga trials, persecution na yan, mga frustrations na yan, mag- mag-cause you to realize na hindi ako dapat magstay stay dito. Darat, pupunta na ako. Gusto ko nang pumunta sa aking tahanan sa langit. Troubles are temporal. The Bible promises us Christians that pain and tears will just last for a lifetime. It won't last long. It won't last long. Hindi yan magtatagal. Kapag ini-entertain kasi natin yung mga problema natin sa earth, pagproblemahin mo, kailan ba ito matatapos? Kailan ba matatapos? Kasi sabi ko, matatapos yan kapag gana. Well, I didn't say ng Bible, we only have one hope. Yung sakit mo, hindi mo alam kung kailan yan gagaling. Pero ano ang hope na binibigay sa atin ng Bible? Pagdating doon, wala nang sakit. Yun yung sure. Pagdating doon, oh, diba, yung problema mo ngayon, hindi mo alam kung kailan matatapos. Hindi ko din alam, huwag mo akong tanungin. Ah, kasi kung may problema din ako, hindi ko din alam kung kailan matatapos. Pero ano lang yung hope ko? Wala na yun doon. Wala na yun doon. It won't last long. Yun lang naman yung lagi kong iniisip eh. Okay. So, we've been talking about, okay, pastor, we have hope. We, be, we don't belong here. We belong to a heavenly city. Okay, that's good. You may ask, how does heavenly hope look like? Anong itsura ba ng heavenly hope na yan? What's so glorious about heaven? Okay, so pabasahin natin yung Revelation chapter 21 verses 1 to 8. And this is my favorite chapter in the whole Bible. Everybody, let us read. Revelation chapter 21 verses 1 to 8. Then I saw a heaven, a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. Verse 3, And I heard a loud voice from the throne, from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and He will dwell with them. They will be His people and God Himself will be, will, will, will be the, with Him, with them. Ano ba yan? And be their God. Fourth, He will wipe away every tear from 
their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. Verse 5, He who was seated on the throne said, I am making all everything new. Then he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. Verse 6, He said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega. The beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water without cost from the spring of the water of life. Verse 7. Those who are victorious will inherit all this. And I will be their God. And they will be my children. Verse 8. Oh, verse 8. Remember this. But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral... Those who practice magic arts, the idolaters, and all liars, they will be consigned to the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. So what would heaven look like? After this life, after all the sufferings, what awaits us in heaven? Kaano ka comforting ang heaven? First, we will be with our, we will be with God. We will be with our God. Alam nyo, parang ganito, naisip nyo ba? Na kung ang Diyos lang kasama natin, hindi sana tayo naghihirap dito sa mundo. Naisip nyo yun? Na kung nandyan lang talaga siya, hindi siguro ako matatakot, hindi siguro ako malungkot, hindi siguro ako umiiyak. Narealize nyo ba yun? Pero ang pangako sa atin is this. Sa new heaven and the new earth, we will be with our God. Verse 3, And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and He will dwell with them. Tingnan natin yung history from, the, from Genesis to Revelation. In Genesis chapter 3, verse 8, God is walking in the garden. Sa original creation, si Yahweh, ang Lord, ay naglalakad sa kanyang creation kasama ng mga tao, kasama ng dalawa nating magulang. After they sinned, pinalayas na sila sa garden, right? Exodus chapter 25 to 31, God dwells with the Israelites through the tabernacle. Hindi na nila nakita ngayon ang Lord physically. Ang Lord ay nandun na, nagmamanifest na doon sa tent. Doon sa tabernacle. And then in 1 Kings 6, verse 1 to 38, wala nang tabernacle. God dwells with Israel through the temple. Kapag nandun ang temple, nandun si Yahweh. In John chapter 1, verses 14, and then chapter 2, verses 19 to 22, in the New Testament, Nagkatawang tao si Kristo, ang Diyos. Jesus Himself dwells among man again. Nakasama at nakasalamuhan nila muli ang Diyos. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. Umalis na ang Lord, right? Nag-akyat na, nag-ascended na siya sa heaven. Asa na siya ngayon? He dwells within us. He dwells within us. And in Revelation chapter 21, verse 3, God's dwelling place is now among, among the people, and He will dwell with them forever. Dati, sa original creation, when everything is perfect, ang Lord nandun. Pero nung nagkasala ang tao, hindi na natin sila nakakasama. Yung presence na lang niya, wala na yung physical presence ng Lord. Pero time will come pag ginawa na niya yung new heaven and new earth. Kapag ginawa na niyang perfect ang lahat ng bagay, He will dwell among us again. Today, we don't see Him. That's why we are called to live by faith and not by sight, right? But time will come where our faith will turn to sight. 
our faith will turn to sight. Ngayon, naniniwala lang tayo na may Diyos. Pero darating yung araw, makikita natin ang Diyos. We will see our God face to face. We will be with Him forever. It's like a long-distance relationship. Couple meets each other again. How sweet, isn't it? This is the greatest blessing we could ever have after this life. Parang yung long-distance relationship na mag na couple. Kaparang ako, pag ako, umuwi ako sa Pilipinas, alam yung feeling na makikita ko uli yung aking girlfriend, parang ganun. <laughs> hey, doy. Tayo. Time will come. Yung long-distance relationship natin sa Lord, time will come. Makakasama muli natin siya. And kung nakakakilig para sa inyo yung magkita kayong muli nung OFW yung girlfriend or boyfriend, how nakakakilig is it kung makikita muli natin ang ating Panginoon? So anong connect nun sa ating mga pains? Anong kanta natin kanina? And all our burdens will be lifted in His presence. Imagine that. All our burdens will be lifted in His presence. It will all vanish away kapag kasama na natin ng Lord. Huwag niyong papatayin sarili niyo para makasama niyo ang Diyos, ha? Hintayin niyo. Pero habang hinihintay niyo, maging masaya kayo. Kasi may hope. At yung hope na yun, sure na sure. Amen? Okay. Second, we will no longer experience pain. Verse 4, And He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death. No more death. Or mourning, or crying, or pain. For the old order of things has passed away. The promise is not something new here in the New Testament. Let's go back to the book of Isaiah. Old Testament pa lang, pangako na to. Isaiah chapter 25 verse 8, He will swallow up death forever, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces, and the reproach of His people. He will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. Isaiah chapter 35 verse 10, And he, the ransomed of the Lord, the saved, The Christian, are you really a Christian? And the ransom of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy upon, be upon their heads. They shall obtain gladness and joy and sorrow and sighing shall be, shall flee away forever. Imagine how sweet it is when your loved one took a handkerchief and wipe away the tears from your eyes. Yung nakakakilig yun kapag sa K-drama, yung mga pinapanood nating movie, ah, pinapahiro niya, pinapahiro niya ngayon, o, di ba? Gano, no? Dudukot niya ng handkerchief, tapos ay, nax, di ba? Nakakakilig. Pero babalikan natin, how nakakakilig is it kapag ang Lord mismo, ang sabi dyan, ang nagpawi ng ating mga luha. He, He, God, God will personally wipe away the tears from your eyes. Without a handkerchief, ha? Walang panyo ang Diyos. Baka si Pino. But how about God Himself when He will wipe away the tears from your eyes? Isn't it more nakakakilig? It doesn't suggest that God will wipe our tears one by one. But That means that God will remove all the causes and occasions of mourning, crying, and pain. The sorrow and sin of the old creation will not continue in the new creation, in the new heaven, and the new earth. And just like how Isaiah described it, there will be no more tears, sorrow, pain, Mourning and even death. 
Di ba? Every, every separation is hurt, right? Kapag may namatay, nakakalungkot, pero doon, there will be no more parting, right? Heaven will be a place of everlasting joy. Diba? Third, what would heaven look like? Everything will be new. Everything will be new. Verse 5, He who was seated on the throne said, I am making all things Everything new. The one who sits on the throne, the king of all universe, the one who rules over the history has, and has appointed the beginning and the end, declares he is making all things new. Remember Genesis chapter 1, when God says, it will happen, right? Let, di ba sabi ng Lord, let there be light and there is light. Revelation chapter 21, verse 5 said, He who was seated on the throne said, When he said everything will be new, it will happen. Just like the, just like the original creation. Yun din yun. So, no sad and painful part of the old creation will be present in the new creation. Every time we experience sadness, hardships, sickness, mourning, and pain here on earth, that should remind us about heaven. Because in heaven, all the bad things will be gone forever. All will be new. All will be new. And that's how beautiful heaven will be. Kakanta ako, ha? Mayroon ako nakanta, mayroon ako naalala eh. Di ba? How beautiful heaven must be. Sweet home of the happy and free. Di ba? Fair haven of rest for the weary. How beautiful heaven must be. Di ba? Ganda na, no? How beautiful heaven must be. Sweet home of the happy and free. Fair haven of rest. For the weary, how beautiful heaven must be. Fair heaven of rest for the weary, how beautiful heaven must be. Church nyo yun, ganda yun. Okay, Romans chapter 8 verse 18, mag e end na ho ako. Nakakakanta ako kasi maaga pa oh. Oh, di ba? Romans chapter 8, verse 18. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. How beautiful heaven must be. Okay, so what should be our response? No more tears? First, we must rejoice in our suffering. It won't last long. Trust God in times of pain. And then third, we must persevere until the end. Tandaan niyo yun, ha? Magkita-kita tayo dun. Hindi ko alam kung sino mauna sa atin, pero gusto ko ako na yung mauna. Siguro next year. <laughs> Di ba? Mas maaga, mas maganda. Remember yung song natin kanina? Kung bakit dalawang linggo na natin kinakanta yan, ako nag-request yan eh. Remember, there is a king. Sino sa inyo may problema ngayon? Sino sa inyo maraming iniiyakan? Di ba? Here on earth, we, we are gathering in front of a cross, right? Crying. But time will come. All of us will gather. Not in front of a cross, but in front of a throne. In front of the king. The song said, there is a king. 
It won't be long. Amen? It won't be long. We will behold Him. And every tear will wipe away. Amen? We'll be at home. The war will be over. Soon we will meet our Savior face to face. And every birth will be lifted in His presence. Amen. Every trophy will be laid on at His feet. There is a name that reigns above all others. Jesus Christ, the King above all kings. And all our worship will belong to you forever. Sabi? Holy, holy, for all eternity, yours is the name that reigns above all others. Jesus Christ, the King above all kings. Jesus Christ, the King above all kings. Diba? Napakaganda. Amen? Amen ba doon? Tandaan ninyo. Remember the words of what we sang earlier. Ha? Huh? Wag na wag niyo tong kakalimutan. And as I end, tapos na ako. Tears no more. Remember that. Alam niyo yung last words, last instruction sa atin sa book of Revelation. Is this. Verse 17, chapter 22. The Spirit and the Bride say, Come, and let the one who hears says, Come, and let the one who is thirsty, Come, let the one who desires take the water of life without price. Ang huling instruction sa book of Revelation is this. Sino mang nakarinig ng prophecy ng Revelation says, Come, Lord Jesus. Excited na ba kayo? So, doon sa heaven, doon sa ating totoong tahanan, there will be no more tears. Amen? Amen? So, rejoice in suffering. Good morning to everyone. Of- Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we glorify you this morning. Lord, you deserve all the glory, praises, and honor, Lord, for you are the holy and the faithful God. Lord, we want to thank you for your word. Lord, we want to thank you for all the songs, Lord. Thank you for your presence. 
Thank you for meeting us again here in this place, Lord. Lord, uh, kami po ay sama-samang dumadalangin as a church. Lord, we want to thank you sa natapos ng dedication yesterday ni Monique. Thank you for the family. We're also thanking you, Panginoon, sa New Year na binigay niyo kay Ate Debbie, Panginoon. Salamat. Will you please bless her, Panginoon, with more fruitful life, Panginoon, fruitful years. Lord, pinagpe-pray din ho namin sa iyo ang kalagayan ngayon ng Canada, kalagayan ng Lloyd Minster. Lord, protect us so that nobody will get the COVID, Panginoon. Lord, silang nagmagsisipagtrabaho, bigyan niya sila ng strength, bigyan niya ng kalakasan, Panginoon, para makapagtrabaho. Sila, Panginoon, na nag stay sa tahanan, Lord, ingatan niyo rin po, Panginoon, sila. Sila kung may mga karamdaman, Panginoon, heal them. You are our great healer, Panginoon. And kami po'y umaasa, Panginoon, sa iyong blessing. Lord, sila kung may mga pinagdaraanan, silang may mga kabigatan, silang mayroong mga pain na nararamdaman, silang, Panginoon, na mayroong tears. Comfort them with the assurance, Panginoon, na ikaw ay nandyan. And then time will come. Lahat ng ito'y mawawala pagdating namin sa iyong presence. Lord, help us to rejoice in the midst of suffering. Help us, Lord, to persevere until the end. Imit niyo po, Panginoon, ang prayers ng bawat isa ang naririto, Panginoon. And everybody, let us receive God's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. This is our prayer. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. sing song. Jesus is our God. 